Good evening, everybody. We're going to do kind of our uh, split session where I've got some PowerPoints on the kicker signal and why they work effectively. And once we get done with that, we'll kick over to live charts. So hope everybody's having a nice fall evening. This is, uh, I think this is the first night we've really had a cool evening. They've all been summer up until this point. Okay, the kicker signal. As we have we often promote, we've got 12 major signals. And the kicker signals are what I would consider the most powerful. A lot of people ask which ones out of the signals, uh, uh, with, which ones are the best ones? Well, the answer is they're all good because we've already narrowed down the 12 major signals from a list of 50 or 60 candlestick signals. And out of those 50 or 60 signals, the 12 are the ones that work the most often, not most often, enough that you don't want to waste your time and mental energy on learning, trying to learn all of them. If you learn the 12 major signals, you pretty much have a grasp uh, visually as well as uh, oh, uh, I guess with the evaluation of what's going on in investor sentiment, when you have that combination, you pretty much have a very firm analysis of what's going on in the markets, probably with the same logic or the same insights as somebody that's been trading in the market for 50 years. So the kicker signal is a very easy one to recognize. If you're in a downtrend, there's one simple rule. When you see the uh, last bearish candle, the next day they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and go positive. Or if you're in an uptrend, they will uh, uh, open here, close here, and then gap it down below the previous day's open and go the opposite direction. Now, this has that element of the gaps already built into the signal, which pretty much identifies where there's a major change of force going from one direction to the other. So when we study the kicker signal, there's three basic kicker signals that are all kind of derivatives of the kicker signal. The kicker signal itself, the trend kicker, and then the, the flutter kicker signal. So be, most of the uh, candlestick signals that we evaluate or identify are based upon using or identifying where the stochastics are. So obviously, the common sense from, candles, from the Japanese race traders is that if you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, more than likely you're going to head for a downtrend. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, obviously you're probably going to be heading for an uptrend. There's very little relevance to see a candlestick buy signal in the overbought area or see a candlestick sell signal in the oversold area. So what we're looking for is the results of the most powerful of the uh, uh, signals. The kicker signal, again, opens here, closes here. They gap it up. And remember, that gap up and go in the opposite direction is just a clear illustration that there's been a major change of investor sentiment, which usually has a lot of follow through. So anytime I see that gapping up, this is what kind of alleviates that hesitancy to say, oh, I don't want to buy a stock that's up 5, 10, 30, 80%. You do if it's going to produce another 400% upside for you. So that gap up is what is telling us that we should be looking for this type of result. And once again, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a major change of investor sentiment. So kicker signal in itself is a very powerful uh, signal. But if you add other elements, such as 
They bounced off the 50 and did a kicker signal. They broke through this downtrending channel. Pretty, and they're doing it in the oversold area. Now remember, stochastics don't really matter, but it adds a little bit of uh, fuel to the fire to see a candlestick uh, uh, sell sig or buy signal or kicker signal occurring in the oversold area. No, not necessarily the bigger the gap, just the bigger the signal. Now, in this case, the gap was big and the candle was big. So if you saw it open here and go all the way up that big candle, that big candle would still tell you there's a, uh, a been a powerful change of investor sentiment. Uh, is it still a kicker if it gaps up off of an up day the day before? Oh, no. A kicker signal is a down day, a dark candle. And then they open it above the previous day's open and go positive. If this was a green candle, it would just be a gap up from a, a buy signal. When do you buy the gap? If I see a kicker signal, now the ultimate kicker signal is you don't want to see a tail or a shadow on the downside. So if I see this, the probabilities are not only pretty strong that we're going to be in an uptrend, but we're going to be in a strong uptrend. Now I'll show you, again, when I say probabilities, the probabilities are that we're going higher. So little kicker signal in the sense that this is a dark candle gap up just the fact that they gapped it up and went the opposite direction tells you there's there's a definite change of investor sentiment would you buy at the kicker signal or wait for confirmation if i happen to see this going on then i flip to my 10 minute chart and say all right should i be buying here should i be buying here if the 10 minute chart on this kicker signal looks the same Let's say this was the uh, kicker signal you flipped over, and this is what the 10-minute chart looked like. Yeah, as long as it stayed above the uh, T-line, uh, you, you want to be a buyer. Why, are not, why not the tail? Because the tail tells you that if they open it up and then they traded it off, the, the strength of the bulls isn't that strong. Now, it's still a kicker signal if there's a tail to the downside, but the best kicker signals is you want to see it open and immediately start trading positive. Does it have to go above the previous candle body or the wick? Oh, the body. Above the previous day's open. So this is what we're looking for. This is your this is kind of your common you only watch 10 minutes or five. Yeah, I use both of them. Remember, the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what's uh, of all the, the cumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So if I see something where I want to be a buyer, because let's say hypothetically this is starting to move up as a kicker signal. If I flip over and my 10-minute chart looks like this also, that as long as they're still trading above, that means they're still buying that kicker signal. No sound. Oh. Oh, Rick, can you help Victoria? Yeah, she needs to hit her. How do you scan for gaps? Well, you don't necessarily scan. Well, you can scan for gaps. That after the market's been open for 10, 15 minutes, you refresh your screens or refresh everything and then see which ones have had the biggest percent price move. Sound is spotty. Where do you place your stop once in? Uh, if this is the body that tells you that the uh, bulls have taken control, you definitely don't want to see them trade back below the open of that candle. 
whether it's that day or in the next couple of days. Okay, so now, as I say, you can have a uh, a uh, shadow or a tail, but if you see it, it, it if you see that it traded lower and then started trading back up above the open, bulls are still in control. Yes, that's still a kicker signal. But the ultimate kicker signal, obviously, is when it opens and immediately starts trading positive. Now, look where this kicker signal occurred. Remember, the uh, uh, every piece of evidence that we can put into our analysis of whether there's a reversal, I mean, remember, the kicker signal does not, doesn't matter where the stochastics are, but if they are occurring here in the oversold area, and they are occurring that far away from the T-line, that's that much more uh, evidence that that we're probably in a, in a uh, reversal. So we are, this is all kind of alluding to that on October 20th, we're gonna be doing the uh, full day training on quantifying which signals and patterns are the most, uh, or what we call the top ranked, starting with the best ones down to the 15th. That doesn't mean the 15th is a bad signal. It's just that we're quantifying which ones are the best out of all the signals and patterns out there. Um, and we're going to be doing it in with two uh, two points of interest, I guess. First of all, recognizing which of the signals are the best. And then putting in them into different categories so that maybe you're a swing trader um, and you want to find the best that are going to be for a three to 10 day trading. Or let's say you're a day trader and you're looking for the most explosive right from the get go. So we're going to put them in, in segregated packages, meaning I recommend because there are so many good signals and patterns that come out of candlestick analysis. And a lot of people say, well, shoot, when there's so many of them, how do you pick the, pick the best ones? I'm recommending that you learn four or five very well and become an expert at those. So you know when to enter, when to stay in, and when to exit. And once you do that, once you learn four or five extremely well, now you're not at the, uh, I want to say, the mercy of what usually occurs in the markets. You know what your probabilities are, uh, knowing those signals and patterns. And with four or five, you're still going to have more opportunities, more trades than you'll be able to handle. So it'll still be a, uh, a uh, function of once you've identified the good trade setups. Now you go back and figure out which ones of those good ones are the best ones. Uh, Gary, we got Rick uh, recording tonight. Uh, um, it is being recorded. Um, and uh, oh, Jim has a, uh, I guess they've got an investment group there in New Jersey that he meets with on this Thursday night of each month. But it is, this is being recorded. Okay, so knowing what the strength of a signal is, it also helps uh, identify when a pattern is working. So if I've got a fry pan bottom building up and then they do a kicker signal, what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? Or what we, do we anticipate confirming the fry pan bottom? A strong breakout. And if they're doing it with a kicker signal, that tells us it's working extremely well. If we've got a kicker signal coming out of a kind of a fry pan bottom and it gaps up through a resistance level, as well as the beginning of the pattern, that much more evidence that the strength of the new trend is coming on with great enthusiasm. And that's exactly uh, uh, exactly what we're looking for coming out of a pattern. If I can see the breakout of a fry pan bottom as a kicker signal, I'm definitely going after it for two reasons. 
One, because it's a kicker signal, and two, because it's telling me I've got a fry pan bottom breakout, it becomes that much more probability that uh, oh, that uh, we've got a, a strong price uh, price action going. Uh, again, kicker signal. What's all the pieces of evidence? Well, they bounced off the 50, then gapped it up through the resistance level. Where did it bounce from? From the 50, where did it bounce through the resistance level? Where is it now? Above, above the T-line. So just the fact that we can identify this, now we can add our evaluation of what all the other uh, things that's confirming that that's where the buyers are. Kicker type signal in the oversold area at the bottom of a downtrend away from the T-line. They're gapping up doing a kicker signal. That's a good place to be buying. I've got a J-hook pattern that is starting to break out uh, with a kicker signal, giving me that much more confidence that this J-hook pattern is going to go into place. A tail does not invalidate a signal, but if I put the open. This seems to contradict. Uh, it all depends on where the tail occurs, Chris. It might have opened here and closed, uh, started trading lower, and then went back up. So, yes, if it started up and then came back down through the open and you stopped out, that's fine. But then when it turned around and came back up through the open again, which direction is it moving at that point? Moving back up through, you know, the direction is it's moving positive. All right, so the opposite obviously is the bearish kicker. Now I always kind of show this illustration because if they're, if Everything's great, and I've done this so many times in my lifetime. Um, so do I understand a kicker is a gap between yesterday's close and today's open? Yes. So if it opened here and closed here, and then it opens here, it's gapped down below or at or below the previous day's uh, open and go in the opposite direction. So there's a gap from where it closed the day before to where it opened on that day. So this used to be me. If I was long and they gapped it down, I used to think, oh man, I was doing so well. And the news today, they've gapped it down. My first inclination was, oh, if they just take it up one more time and let me out, I'd be so thankful. But through experience, I discovered that if they gap it down below the previous day's open, the bulls are, or the bears are definitely in control. There's only one thing you want to do, close out the position immediately. Uh, yeah, it's usually going to occur on a daily chart. Uh, usually you're not going to get a kicker signal on an intraday chart because it's, very rarely do they gap it during the day unless there's news during the day. So the reason I close out immediately is I know now what the probability of that signal is going to be, a bearish kicker signal. So what happens if I keep holding it, hoping that it's going to go up? When it starts moving down here, I, I think, oh, shoot, I should have... Uh, should have closed it here. I can't close it here because what if it comes up a little bit and I can get out? And then it's down here. And I say, oh, shoot, I should have gotten out of here. Then when do I finally get out? When I can't hang on to it anymore and I close it here. So if I close it out immediately, that does three things for me. One, and the most important one is, it tells me immediately that I'm going to clear my mind. I'm not going to sit here watching this bad trade, hoping that I can get out at a better price. Two, 
if I know this is opening lower and trading lower, what type of signal do I anticipate it's doing? A bearish kicker signal. So I might close out a position and go short, anticipating we're moving in this direction. And hopefully, this is uh, this move will get back the uh, loss I took from having to close here and open here. And three, it gives puts money back in my account to do something with it more creative than sitting here watching it uh, deteriorate. Oh, uh, Gary, you can use it, but uh, the most effectively, uh, you can use it on a weekly or a, a monthly chart, but more than likely to have that uh, weekly or monthly chart showing a kicker signal, you had to have had a daily kicker signal uh, out there someplace. Uh, Mr. Candles, yes. If this opens here and I'm sitting here watching it, thinking, all right, let me see what they do. Oh, after two minutes, they haven't done anything. Uh, now they're starting to sell it off. Eh, I better get out of it. Then if I get out of it, now I can think clearly. All right, what's this doing? Oh, this is actually doing a bearish kicker signal. Now I can think about shorting that position. So remember, the whole, whole visual process of this is recognizing that this has been a strong reversal of investor sentiment, that you want to do something with that immediately. These are the type of things that allow you that even if you weren't in this position, when they opened here and closed up here and they gap it down, go in the opposite direction, that tells you there's a strong force to the downside. So the uh, question we put in the newsletter today was, are you always uh, gonna be in the right direction? Or are you gonna recognize when you have big, huge moves in the market like this? And the answer is not this per se, but the fact that we had an evening star signal and we use our very simple rules um, that we had a candlestick sell signal and then a close below the T-line. If you just, I don't know how to say it any better, if you take my word for it, that once you close below the T-line after a candlestick reversal signal, the probabilities are much hugely greater that you're heading down. So if you do have a kicker signal like in F5, what was the parameters once you went short on this? You stayed short until you saw a candlestick sell signal, and a, or even a candlestick, you stayed short until you saw a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. But remember our caveat, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability uh, they could be uh, ready to reverse it. That's where you get a little bit more diligent watching for your sell signals. The same thing with net tees. Gap down and go the opposite direction. It's creating this downtrend. We use net tees in an example a while ago. There's your bullish handle and they gap it down. It's starting, it's just telling you there's a lot of force to the downside. So anytime I see a situation like this and they gap it down below the previous day's open, the first thing you should do is close out a long position if you're long and or see if they're selling it off so you can start shorting it because that is a message to tell you there's now a strong bearish force in that trade. Then it becomes very simple to analyze. You stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. The expectations are you're going to be in a downtrend. Expectations, you're going to be in a downtrend. This is just a strong indication that there's been a change of investor sentiment. And when it closes below the T-line, but without a signal, what is that? That is, if it closes below the T-line without a signal, best thing to do is 
look at it and say, all right, to stay in this, I better see it open positive tomorrow and trade positive. If it opens lower, close out the position. How can I get your scan set up on TOS? Do you sell this? I have asked TOS technical support, and they don't have them. Thanks in advance for your help. Lewis, are you in the uh, members chat room each day? That's a question to ask there because the people that have already got it set up can pretty well help you much better than I because I don't I don't use TOS for my scanning, uh, but they should have the uh, the scans over there. I'm guessing it's because whoever you talk to aren't aware of where they are. Uh, Jake, when we go to the live charts, bring it up, uh, bring up, and uh, I've already got that one written down. Murphy, you did some sort of kicker signal today. Oh, so, Mike, we've got the formulas for not think or swim for uh, TC net. But again, that's another question that you need to ask people in the chat room because there's a bunch of people that have already got their scan set up on think or swim. I just don't use it only because I'm like teaching an old dog new tricks. I've got all my stuff set up already. Uh, there you go, John. Uh, John will be glad to share. Oh, Lisa, that's true too. So I'm not sure how to get to those either. All right, let's. Uh, so, anyways, the the bottom line to the kicker signal is whenever you see a kicker signal, you've got a high probability that you're going to be heading in the right direction. Kicker signal heading in a bearish direction. So that horse right there identifies a very high probability trade. Now, a flutter kicker is something where you don't have to jump in if it right away. A flutter kicker is basically it opens here and closes here. The next day they gap up, but they do a doji. Doesn't look very strong. However, what's our uh, uh, what's our uh, simple rule of a uh, uh, a, a doji. The price is usually going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if it opens positive, what do we expect? We expect the uh, trade to move positive. And so when it trades positive after that bearish kicker, if you took out this little flutter, you basically have a kicker signal. Now, the advantage you have of this is if you see this setup, then you know if it opens positive the next day, you've got a high probability trade immediately. Uh, flutter kicker, I guess that we considered that a, a doji and then it opened positive. Or, again, a very simple entry. If it did this, if it opened positive the next day, you want to be buying immediately. So not only are you going to have a powerful trade, but you have a high probability of that powerful trade. So here's kind of a, and it opens positive after opening above this open. This is just the alert that if they opened it above the previous day's open and started trading, uh, kept it up there, the next day, if it opens positive, they're still moving in that direction. Just a high probability trade setup. And it allows you to take it, take advantage of, maybe you didn't see this on this day because it didn't do anything magnificent. But we know the doji rule that if it opens positive, it's going to move in that direction. No, a, 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 a flutter kicker is not a best friend signal. We'll get to some of the best friend signals. Okay, a trend kicker is when your trend is already in existence. 
comes up, then you have a dark candle day. When they gap it up and go positive, that's telling you there's still a lot more strength in that trend. So anytime I see a down day and the next day they gap it up, that tells me there's going to be more upside. Oh, oh DSW. I think this opened here, closed here. It was already in a trend, and they gapped it up. And then when they gap it up a second time through this resistance level, that tells you the force of the trend kicker is still in existence and breaking out through any resistance levels. So this is where just observing or getting into positions with the simple concepts of candlesticks is kind of a little trend or a little kicker signal. This is a dark candle, and they gap it up through this resistance level and the 50 and the 200. So what's our simple rule? You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T line. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. And the very simple analysis that the Japanese rice traders provided for us, which is, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So if you're in an uptrend and you're in the overbought area and they're starting to gap it up in the overbought area, what's the first thing you start doing? You start looking for sell signals. Uh, Jake, no. The moving averages mean we're not trading the moving averages. We're trading the signals. Now, the fact that they gap through those moving averages adds a little bit more credibility. But we're buying either the patterns or the signals. Again, there's a trend kicker signal coming out of a fry pan bottom. Whoops, got through them already. So again, the kicker signals are the most powerful of the candlestick signals. Um, Watch one. What are the thoughts after the first kicker where it gaps up but opens down? I don't know where you're you're seeing. Oh, the fact that it opened here and closed down, that wasn't a kicker signal. That was a bearish told us that the uh, bears were in control. But then the next day can't tell. Is that a red candle? I'm colorblind. Gapped up and traded lower. And then they gapped up again. So again, it's telling you uh, there's lots of uh, strength in that trend. All right, uh, Becky, do we have the uh, links for people to get into the uh, October session? Now, we kind of promote the October training as a four-hour training, but Feel lucky if we get done in less than seven hours. It'll be a full day. Okay, there's the uh, non members link. And yeah, your four hour session, we start usually at 9 or 9 30 in the morning. More than likely, you're going to go to about four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, Rick, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to shut this down and then bring up live charts. Uh, hold on, I gotta bring this over. So I'm doing this. If you've got questions about kicker signals, this is a good time to ask. All right, the first thing we want to kind of analyze
Uh, Jake, no, they're both very reliable. Um, you bring these to your room each morning. Uh, I put out, Randy, I put out two or three stock picks each day. If we think the market is heading higher, we're, you're obviously going to get three, uh, three long positions. If the market's heading lower, you're going to get obviously three short positions. If the market doesn't really have any direction, you might get two longs and two shorts. Um, For the day um, and then if the market opens lower obviously you're going to go short let's see what am i looking at here the dow all right all right we should resize this rick you tell me when you're ready Okay. So, anyways, Randy, I, each night I put out a uh, mini or a uh, a video, usually it's about two minutes, showing the picks. Not just showing the picks, but showing the video of uh, in the video what indicators we're looking at to make those the recommendations. However, during the whole learning process of candlesticks, we emphasize everybody learning how to set up their own scans because i may just uh, put out three or four picks each day but they may not open correctly but that doesn't mean other good charts uh, uh, didn't open correctly so those are going to be your supply of looking for good trades and then usually in the chat room if there's other things moving uh, our chat room is open all day long, and it's got two great benefits. One, if you've got questions on mechanics, like which trading uh, system to use, or which scanning software is the best, or how to set up your uh, scans on a particular software, you're gonna get a lot of that information. But also, we've got people in the chat room that have been trading candlesticks for quite a while, they're going to be finding the good ones. And so if you find the few people that you, when you look at their charts, you can see they're very good charts. You start just watching to see what they're recommending. Um, so you, you've always got a constant supply of more trades than, uh, than what you'll be able to handle. And with that, you can now, once you start learning which ones are the best ones for you to trade, then uh, now, now, not only do you have a supply of uh, positions to trade, but you also can can cultivate which ones are the best ones to go after. Uh, is kicker effective if it doesn't make the T line? Uh, well, the kicker signal is usually telling you it's a strong strong reversal. The T line is usually not a relevant factor. Now I do have a couple on here. Remember, we're doing the high probabilities. So again, the market looked like this. It did an evening star. It was getting to the top of the trend. And the fact that it closed below the T-line was telling us that if you do my simple uh, portfolio uh, criteria is if I've got a set number of positions on, and my number is usually 10, that if it, uh, uh, if uh, we're getting up here and I've got eight long and two shorts, then maybe now I've got uh, seven long, three shorts. Now I've got five shorts, five longs. Maybe here I'm now seven short. So, it wasn't that I all of a sudden went from long to short. Analyzing each chart on a daily basis will tell me when the long positions are starting to peter out and when the short positions. So I was we were predominantly short on these days, not because we knew these days were coming. It just told us that we should be 
with the uh, sell signal and a close below the key line, we should have have more short positions on. Same scenario over here on the NASDAQ. There's our, uh, when we do our quantitative uh, top rank signals, when you see a doji followed by a gap down, that's your very best friend. So did we guess this was coming? No, that told us that the selling pressure was starting to come on uh, uh, very hard. Let me do a few that, so here, here is Murphy. It's got a kicker, what I call a kicker type signal. True kicker would have been here trading up, but the fact that they gapped it up, used the T line as support, that still implies there's there's going to be uh, more upside. L brands, no, that's not a kicker signal. Notice that it closed back below where it opened. So that's what we call the message, except this is not a good message. Even though it gapped up, traded up, it came back down into the trading range. Now, if this had opened up here and closed here, well above this area, it would still tell you there was, there was a strong gap up, and then there was profit taking. So what do we do then? We just wait to see when the profit taking uh, is over. Okay, so let me, uh, let's see, I do have a couple kicker signals here, if I can. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. This is a kicker signal. Notice it opened here, closed here. Today they gapped it up. That shows you there's been a powerful reversal. That's CLS. AMCX. Uh, this was to illustrate kind of the kicker signal to start this downtrend. And G-O-L-G. Look what this did today. Gapped up and did a doji. So what's that setting up for? But if this opens positive tomorrow, what do we got going on? A bullish flutter kicker signal. What's our simple rule of the doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So again, this is not rocket science. This is the fact that candlestick signals are the graphic depictions that the Japanese rice traders have identified for us over 400 years. And I always uh, remind people that the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy trading candlesticks. They became legendarily wealthy trading candlesticks. And what did they become rich from trading? the most basic commodity in the world, rice. So everybody asks, well, can you use this for Forex? Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. It doesn't matter what the trading entity is. Um, uh, whether you're trading stocks, bonds, uh, currencies, live cattle, tulip bulbs, anything that uh, uh, has fear and greed in it, that's what candlesticks uh, illustrate, is the investor sentiment. What is this one? What if a kicker starts down into the doji, but above the first candle? I don't understand. What if the kicker starts down into the doji, but above the first candle? I don't understand what you're asking. A kicker signal is going to be a gap. And a kicker signal is going to be a big body. And then they gap it up and do another big body. So doing the dojis, that's not kicker signals. That's usually uh, your best friend or your left-right combos. Oh, Christopher, a kicker signal. Here's a couple that failed. This is why I say the probabilities. A kicker signal is where it opens here 
and closes here. The next day, they gap it up and go the opposite direction. That's a kicker signal. Now, what we're going to be illustrating is the kicker signal's probably got a very high probability of trading higher. But remember, we're using the word probability. Where would be the logical place if you were buying on this day to have a stop? They shouldn't come back down through the open of that that kicker signal. If they do, who's in control? The bears are uh, in control. Same thing on Chef. Chef had a kicker signal the other day. But if this is the body that told you, again, they opened here, closed here, gapped up, and went the opposite direction. If this is the body that told you that the bulls are in control, if the bears can close it back below that level, in below the T-line, what's that telling you about the strength of that kicker signal? It's not there. Um, okay, you close out that position. All right, let's see what else we got. I'm scrolling down to get the ones. Uh, Murphy, a belt hold. No. That opened here and closed here, then gapped up today. That's If it had opened here and closed here as a green candle, that would be a belt hold. Uh, uh, Mike, I usually don't pay any attention to after hours trading. Now, this was a bullish engulfing signal followed by a gap up through the resistance level right here and through the 34, the T-line, and the uh, 50. So that's pretty much telling us. Dang it, I hate doing that. So you kind of broke through this resistance level with a gap up. Notice you had a gap down over here. So if it's trading in 1971, yeah, it's not trading that far away. Oh, Pashaw, hold on, I got to close out. This and buy. Interpret the doji at the top of the Dow Jones. There was an incredible high volume that day, almost four billion, but price hardly changed. The bigger sucker trade. No. If you're looking at the Dow Jones and the volume was, I can't tell the volume, but this is your signal. If you use very simple analysis, that if you see a doji in the overbought condition, what's the simple rule of the doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open it the next day. So if you see a doji in the overbought area and they're opening it lower the next day, that's a... Uh, that's telling you the sellers are taking control. You see a doji and they open it lower the next day, that tells you the sellers are in control. This is, there's just very simple rules. If you just study the doji, you've only got a couple rules that in a downtrend, the doji needs to have a bullish confirmation and an up in an overbought condition. If it opens lower, the reversal has started. DCYT. DCYT doesn't show this. I don't, CB, I don't know what this is. Right now, there's nothing there to tell, tell you not to stay short until you see a confirmed buy signal. Uh, Dean, I'm pretty sure they did if Bernie Sanders had been 
around 400 years ago. Okay, so there's your best friend's signal. A doji followed by a gap up. This becomes a high probability bullish trade. Why do we call it your best friend? Bah, what is that? Not only has it gapped up, telling you you're going to be in an uptrend, it usually implies you're going to be in a very strong uptrend. That was the reason we started buying IDT. Doji gap up. This was based upon their earnings. So should you have been buying here or here or here or here? This is where, let's see if I can do this right. This is where you go to your 10 minute chart. Now I might be buying here, might be buying here. I wouldn't be buying here, wouldn't be buying here, but it might be buying in here because what's it telling me? They're staying above the T line. If I looked at it right here, no, nah, I wouldn't be buying, but I'd be buying here because it's telling me the they're still buying. Or I might be buying here because if I'm buying here with it above the T line, what's that telling me about my price move? That it's still they're still buying it. How big is that price move going to be on a daily basis? It might be only to here, might be only to here. At one point it came up here and then traded all the way back down here. But it, when it traded back down here, what did I still have going on? A best friend signal. Um, do you wait for the close to get out? Uh, most of the time, yes. Or, uh, I'm trying to figure out which one. Let's just go back to this one. Uh, let's see if this one would work. No. On this one, if it came back down through here during the day, what's that telling me about the strength of my uptrend? It's not there. That's where I put my safety stop. Oh, I forget which ones we... Uh, People were showing safety stop. So a lot of people say, well, where do you put your stop? 3%, 6%, 8% below where you bought it? The answer is the market doesn't give a hoot where you bought something. It's where you can visually see that they're, the bears are still in control or have taken control. That might be three-tenths of 1%. That might be 13%. But the probability is where if you were buying this on this day, that that's where it should go. It shouldn't come back in that direction. Any bullish stocks? Ron, hold on. Yeah, you know, don't me. I'm just trying to get through the questions and answers here, and then we'll get to. Uh, um, no, IDT is not a kicker signal. Remember, a kicker signal is a big bearish candle followed by a big bullish candle that gapped up above the previous day's open. This is a doji followed by a gap up. That's your best friend. Uh, Christopher on Chef. No, the doji wouldn't have told us because. What is the inference of this kicker signal that we're going in this direction? Now, when it opened lower, then you would have been more alert that if it kept trading off back below this level, that's where you wanted to stop out. Again, because of the simple doji rule. And at the same time, how many days ago was this? That you're starting to see some selling in the market. Hello, Pat. How are you? Is a belt hold the exception to the sell on a gap down? Uh, yes. And it might not even be... Oh, which one is it? McCormick. Uh, no. What's McCormick? M R K. 
phi. MKC, there's a belt hold. First of all, you wouldn't have been long because if, when it came back below the uh, T line, if you were long, you should have closed out. A belt hold then gap down, so you would. But when it closed back up here, now you have a belt hold signal to that you can identify. That's when. What, and what's the uh, relevance of a belt hold? Well, they call it a belt hold because the Japanese race areas say the sumo wrestlers are uh, fighting each other. One's trying to back out of the ring. He grabs his belt, pulls him back in, and they're back to fighting. But what it does as far as supply and demand is there was buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. And then the sellers just said, get me out. But as soon as they were getting out, the bulls were stepping in and sopping up all that selling. Now there's not as many sellers in the way that any buying is going to create a much uh, better uptrend. Do you consider trend from the last 35 bars? No, uh, I have no, I, no, no relevancy uh, as far as the number of bars. Uh, yes, if you happen to see before the market opens, uh, I'm guessing Murphy was one of those where if somebody said, oh, look at Murphy gapping up, that if you saw it was opening up here, yeah, you could start uh, thinking about buying it here. Could you use candlesticks with charts of an option strike? The same as a stock, as long as there's good volume. CB, options are just a method of buying the stock. So if I'm going to short something, I might short the stock or I might buy the puts. So, and a lot of people say, well, how, how do you, uh, if your puts go against you, how big of, how do you decide when to close out the puts? If you're buying puts based upon the direction of the, what the stock is doing, if I bought puts here and then all of a sudden it closed back up here, I'd be covering my short position in the stock. That means you want to close out your puts. Um, okay, Joel, at least you have a journal. That's good. Kicker signal works most of the time with the overall market, not necessarily the overall market. Um, uh, yes, and Chef and SGH probably had, uh, uh, yeah, more relevancy that they didn't work because of the market. Now, that doesn't necessarily hold true that a kicker signal, remember, a kicker signal is a signal that is the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So if you see a kicker signal forming and the market's heading down, people are buying that stock even though they know the market's heading down. So the force is much better, obviously, like an AMCX with that bearish kicker um, with the market going. So obviously, you get much better results when you go with the flow, but the kicker signal is powerful enough that you don't necessarily need to depend on that market flow to make it work. Now, this is a huge evening star signal that failed up here. Now, you can't short this because it's below $5, but uh, yeah, there's nothing I would do with that. Hold on to your individual stock ones um why use a 10 minute chart versus a one minute chart because a one minute chart may be just whipsawing up and down very quickly um the 10 minute chart gives you more of a feel what your overall trend is now here's your best friend on m a m r n 45 degree uh after your your best friend now what's it doing a j hook pattern
on IDT, there are they're all dojis for weeks. Does that mean anything? Yes. Meant there wasn't any real interest in this stock. Didn't trade very much or didn't trade very yeah, you can see the volume. Uh, I don't know whether I can do it here. Yeah, the volume wasn't very big until the breakout day. Uh, yes, the stochastics show that it's overbought. But remember, we're not buying stochastics. We're buying the signal. Uh, JPG, belt hold, meaning what? Uh, you want two large candles. Which one were you referring to? I mean, this is could be a kicker signal, but it's still the same implication. If um, you like to see a big candle, but if this is a candle, candle hammer type signal, it's still the same implication that there's a, a definite change of investor sentiment. Uh, thank you, Gary. Two big down, big down days. Is that called anything? Yes. Called a bearish engulfing signal followed by more selling. There's your bearish engulfing signal. Um, uh, RP. Uh, the green book, uh, Profitable Candlestick Patterns, is the meaty one. Then uh, we've also got the third book. That, uh, the, that book was the second book. The third book is how to control your emotions using the uh, prospects or the probability of the candlesticks. Um, And then the first one, which was published by Wiley and Sons, gives you kind of a more of a general overall view of candlesticks. Okay, so here's what we got. Back to IDT. You're that far away from the, the T line, yes. But remember, we're just now coming out of a, uh, a, a best friend signal and a big move. So what is kind of the expected result? Well, our first target, there's a gap right here. So we could be in a 45 degree from this level. So the fact that they had a big move today and then continued to trade a positive was a, uh, I didn't. Well, here's your 10-minute uh, chart over the last, apparently, the last couple of days where they opened it a little bit lower and then started taking it right back up again. Okay. Uh, let me go right to the golds. The golds were all acting well. Let's get back to the daily charts. You can see what happened in Nugget today. It did a bullish engulfing, kind of a left-right combo. Left-right combo is one of your strongest reversal signals. Then a gap up. That alone is a good bullish indicator. But you add the fact that it broke out through kind of this whole bottoming area, it tells you there's probably more upside. There's at least a little gap right here to fill, here to fill which makes the prospects of going toward the 200-day moving average pretty good. So you can either buy that or you can buy some of the gold stocks. Look at kind of the fry pan bottom on GFI, left-right combo, doji sandwich. Now they've broken through the 50, right about where this pattern started. Where's the targets? Gap area, gap area, 200-day moving average. So there's going to be a lot of good-looking gold stocks. Now it's just a, a matter of deciding which ones are the best. Here's a fry pan bottom breakout on SBGL. 
ABX, J hook pattern, AU. There's your kind of your bobble breakout. Notice how it did a little belt hold right off the 50. Went through the 200. Probably a good indication that there's going to be a lot more upside. Now that's going to be based on the fact that gold moved up big, broke out through this level. It's sagging a little bit after hours. But remember, after hours is not a major in indication of what uh, what's going on. That's just a little little money trading after hours. AG, another breakout, probably at least heading for the 200-day moving average. AEM, another bullish Harami gap up through the resistance level. So when you have a bunch of stocks that are all in the same sector acting well, now it's just a function of which ones are the highest probability uh, uh, chart setups. And that's, again, knowing what the results are from the different patterns. So, all right, I've got five, six, seven good, good stocks. Which one do I want to go after based upon their individual chart? There's a best friend about ready to break out through this level. And one more in the gold area. Mag, if this opens positive, what do you have? You've got a bobble breakout. Okay, so another one, your best friend, there's uh, this one is probably going to be a very good option setup because of the best friend on uh, RH tomorrow. The fry pan bottom, Fred, nice fry pan bottom breaking out to the upside. Uh, we've had a few people trading PRYX. Oh, it did this the other day. There's kind of a fry pan bottom here that's broken out. And I don't know why that that uh, doesn't uh, show everything. And just WPM coming out of this slow curve with kind of a trend kicker signal, making this area, the gap and the 200, the next likely target. Uh, MNK did have a kicker signal to the downside, but then you got to say, all right, observe the obvious. They aren't selling it off here. So this one really didn't execute as far as a short, unless you shorted up here on the kicker signal. Right now it's telling me, oh, my probabilities are pretty bad. They're not selling this off. If they didn't blast this to the downside tomorrow, I'd probably cover it. Uh, close out that position. Then worst case scenario is, yeah, you put a sell stop right about here. But if it came down through there, that means they are continuing to sell it off. Again, there's a gap over here. Uh, let's just take a quick look at a few. Vert, J-hook pattern. I'd get ready to buy this one on positive trading. You can see how the J hook supported right on the uh, on the T line. What happened there? Did I do that wrong? Maybe it's A A B A. That might be. Uh, this one was acting better earlier, but you can see what's happening right here. It's holding at the at the T line. That one you buy if you see the next buy signal. GDS did a bullish engulfing. If you were short, you would have covered today. You're in the oversold area. If they could open here and trade back up above the open of the yesterday. I told you the bulls were taking control. You wanted to close out your position. So your stop losses on a lot of trades are just common sense areas showing you when there's too much uh, bullish strength. Strength. ZTO. 
bullish engulfing. If this opens positive, probably at least bouncing back up to the 200 day moving average. CBLK, where do you start looking for the ones that are ready to reverse? Well, notice you got an inverted hammer, Harami. Now, the Harami tells you the selling has stopped. The inverted hammer tells you if they open up positive, you've got an extremely high probability uh, that, you, that they're going to start trading at positive. GDS. Uh, yes, and I would probably still want to see bullish confirmation that if I was buying on positive trading tomorrow, I would want to see it get up above the T-line very quickly. An SSTI. In the oversold area, if you're short, you stay short. However, you've got an inverted hammer. If it opens positive tomorrow, you probably want to cover your short. And if you want to go long, at least you can kind of expect probably a bounce back up toward the uh, T line. Okay, the uh, yeah, the uh, pre uh, the futures are up 143. But once again, the uh, uh, the futures right now do not mean anything. It's 10 minutes before the market opens that you want to start looking at uh, what what's happening with the futures. Because there's a lot of investor sentiment can change between now and 9.30 tomorrow morning. All right, so the reason I'm showing this is when you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line, the probabilities are extremely strong that you're heading down. When you see a close below very, very low the T line, this is why you want to get out of the trade. Now, if it closes just below the T line, you give it another day. But um, when you see a sell signal and a close below the T line, close it out. The worst case scenario is you can always buy it back. Square. There's your dark cloud bearish engulfing. There is your close below the T line. As soon as something closes below the T line after sell signals, the prospects are greatly in your favor that you're going to be in a downtrend. AMRS. I don't know. Oh, this one, if you spread it out a little bit, you can see what this was doing. You had a double bottom, fry pan bottom, and look what happened. This is why you want to know the relevancy of candlestick signals. Notice that when you got back up to this level where the breakout should occur, you had a bearish harami. That told you you wanted to close it out because they weren't breaking out, uh, wanted to be back out of this trade. Oops. Okay. Um, bold, same scenario. When you start closing below the T line, the prospects are going against you. And oh, there's your doji gap down. So if I was still looking for something to short, if this opened weaker tomorrow, I'd probably that'd be uh, one of my shorts. Now, obviously, we're kind of keeping our powder dry. There's your bearish engulfing signal, and where did it occur? Right smack dab at the 50-day moving average. What that tell us about the 50? That it was still acting as resistance. Now, what do we got? We've got a bearish doji sandwich. Where's our next possible target? Back down into this area. These are daily charts, not day trading. Uh, these are daily charts. But if I'm day trading something, I want to know which way I want to be day trading it. 
So if this was opening lower and I was day trading it, at least I could be trading off my five minute chart or my 10 minute chart, knowing that that's the direction I probably want to be. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm new at this. Are these all day trading time frame? Yes. But, uh, but these are all just to illustrate the signals and patterns that I can find on the daily charts. These signals and patterns are still as relevant. For example, if you go to your five minute chart or your 10 minute chart, the patterns are exactly the same. It tells you when to get out of a day trade, get back into a day trade on the short side. Didn't read up far enough. Whoops. TSRO, another one that here's another important factor. Notice how they took it up and then they brought it back down. This becomes a very uh, high probability entry on a short that if they're trading positive after after a downtrend has started, if they come back down through the open, that means the bears are controlling the trades. Lily, same scenario. Notice what happened up here. Shooting star doji, bearish uh, confirmation. Where was the first target? Probably back here to the T line. So if you started shorting here, knowing that the T line was your first target, it just, it's not like, oh, we're anticipating this big move. We're just anticipating that it's moving down. We don't know how big it's going to be. It just, it just puts you in the right position at the right time. Sell signals, you stay short until you see a buy signal. These all had relevant. Uh, here's your inverted hammer in the oversold area, way away from the T-line. If they open this positive, that's a good probability they're ready to bounce this. Uh, to make your trade decision, would you go to monthly? No, the monthly have nothing to do with what's happening right now, unless you plan to be uh, a long-term investor. I'm a day trader, so I'm looking to see what's happening on the daily charts to, to know when to get in and out. Now, if I'm trading a little bit longer term, I might use a combination of the day, daily charts and the weekly charts. Uh, so this one closed as a doji in the oversold area. What's that tell me? There might be indecision here. I might get ready to start buying this with the anticipation that this could start a bounce back up toward the, uh, the T line, which means if I'm a day trader or holding for a day or two, that might be a quick, uh, quick trade. And TDOC. Again, there's your dark cloud. There's your close below the T-line. There's your doji in the oversold area. Same scenario. If this opens positive tomorrow after a doji in the oversold area, at least the prospects of a uh, of a uh, bullish reversal, at least for a couple of days anyways. Same scenario on CRC. A doji. Right smack dab on the uh, 50. However, this was one's not giving me as clear a reversal prospect because the stochastics are still not in the oversold area. Uh, depends on how aggressive you want to be. I was a BGNE. If I'm aggressive and it opens positive, I'm buying right away with the idea that it's going to come back up to the T line. If I'm more conservative, yeah, I may want to see buying and wait for it to close up above the T-line. It depends on each person's risk reward uh, factor. So right now, as we can see, crude oil is heading down, but I've got a little long position on it right now because on my 10 minute chart, it's looking like this. And if it breaks out through, say this level, 
there could be some more upside to it. So this chart could be your daily chart, your 10-minute chart, your hourly chart, whatever time frame you're trading. Here's my five-minute chart. It's going to show me a little bit quicker what's what's happening. And how long do I stay long right now? Probably as long as my 10-minute chart stays up above the T-line. Uh, Jake, that we don't have to understand. All we have to understand is that some of the oil stocks, now well, this one, well, this one was trading up positive earlier today, but here's an indication of whether people are bailing out of this stock, ESV. Notice where it opened and where it closed. Even though it was down slightly on the day, there was buyers in there after the open. Uh, Mike, we just don't have a easy way to do it. Um, yeah, we just don't have an easy way to record the the day or the intraday uh, charts or the inter intraday chats. Okay. Are there any general questions, Mike? I'll see if no, uh, we used to have somebody that recorded them, and you could always get them from that person. I'll I'll check tomorrow to see if anybody's recording the intraday uh, part. All right. Any general questions on candlesticks, Becky? You might want to put the uh, link in for the the high uh, there, the top ranked analysis. Uh, I our information is on Ninja Trader, and we will be doing some uh, uh, training with Ninja Trader because they've got some uh, uh, unique, I want to say, level twos that shows you on a more, uh, I want to say, timely basis of what the volume is while while a candlestick signal is being formed. Gives you that little bit more uh, edge. ESV setting up for reversal. Oh, not necessarily. It could if it came back down, let's say, through the day's open. Trade Station, I'm pretty sure they have been working on getting our information over there. I'm not sure if they ever got that completed or not. This is being recorded, yes. Rick. Uh, on S G H not necessarily. When you look at this chart now, what's this chart telling you? Not a whole lot of anything. So there's gonna be a lot of uh charts where uh uh Where once a signal fails, it might not it may not be a great looking chart after that. I use TC uh, uh, 2000 uh, and Metastock for the scanning, and that's just because I've been using them for years. So all the scanning software should or uh, formulas should be with Ninja Trader, TradeStation, Thinkorswim. I just don't know. Uh, how to apply them because I don't use those. Uh, uh, what do you do for your scans? Uh, Sue, I break down my trading universe down to uh, oh, uh, stocks greater than $5 a share and uh, more than 200,000 shares a day. The, the uh, $5 uh, a share is mostly because most brokerage firms won't margin stock that's less than five dollars a share and every time i put on a position i know the probabilities are in my favor that i want to uh, get as much leverage as possible to margin it and then the two hundred thousand 
has a dual factor. One, I want to be able to get in and out of positions quickly without, when I put in an order, I want to have it executed almost immediately. And secondly, with that amount of volume, it makes sure that your, your uh, signals are going to be that much more accurate. Any benefits if you refer me to buy, any benefits if you refer me to buy Ninja Trader? I don't know. <laughs> That's the marketing group and uh, uh, I again, I don't use Ninja Trader, so I don't know how they execute. I know there's a bunch of people in, in the chat room that use it, so um, oh, I'm sorry, Christopher. Yes, no, not. We're not buying the uh, moving averages. We're buying the signals. Now, everything else becomes a confirming indicator. Uh, let's see. We also recommended today VSI because VSI did a morning star type signal and then opened positive. When it opened positive, what was it telling us? It was telling us that it was breaking this downtrend. It was telling us it was confirming the morning star signal. And it was telling us that the T line was not acting as resistant. With stochastics coming up, that was a pretty good probability. So didn't matter. Some people say, well, do you buy when you're below the 50 or above the 50? It doesn't matter. We're buying the signal. Everything else becomes an indicator. Um, no, a J hook, remember, a J hook. Uh, is a, a strong uptrend, a pullback, and then an uptrend. This is just a downtrend reversal. Oh, benefits to me? Not that I know of. Okay. We can take on a few uh, individual stocks. Everybody just do one at a time so we can can get everybody out of here. Oh, I didn't do the biggies. I meant to do the biggies. Amazon, as you can see, is in the oversold area, did a doji, and look how far away it is from the T-line. So once it closed below the T-line, it was a short until you see a buy signal. Apple, same scenario. It did a doji. But it's not in the oversold area yet, so there might still be some more downside. Labu still trading lower. I don't know how. It... So you stay short until you see a buy signal. But the suspicion is you're probably going to see a buy signal fairly soon because look how far away you've moved from the T line and look where you are in the oversold area. Where would I put a stop on VSI? I wouldn't want to see it trade back below the open of today. If it did, that tells you the bulls aren't there. Tesla, nothing yet. If you're short, you stay short, but you can see it's trying to base and you're getting toward the oversold area. I wouldn't want, if I was short, I wouldn't want to see any strength from here. Freeport. Did a bullish engulfing. So there was your gap down hammer type signal in the oversold area. Your safety stop, if you were short, was at today's high. That's where you should have covered it. I wouldn't be a buyer of this until you see it confirmed by uh, closing up above the T line. NVIDIA, still selling off hard. Again, your shooting star Harami, hanging man, closed below the T line. Nothing yet to tell any of the buyers have come into this one. And Netflix did a spinning top close to the 200, getting toward the oversold. I'd watch this area. I, if I was short, I'd stay short, but I'd be uh, watching to see uh, uh, when the bulls are coming in. ESRX, bearish engulfing, closed below the T-line. You can short this on weakness with the expectation it could be coming back down toward the uh, the 50. SBBP hasn't executed yet. It did a bobble breakout, 
And now it's doing what we call a double doji. And the double doji is it came up, consolidated doji, consolidated doji. If it opens positive tomorrow, you can start buying immediately. That means the consolidation that was very indecisive is over. And there's your spinning top, almost a Harami, right here on the 200 in the oversold area. Get ready to start buying this, or if you're short, you get ready to start covering your short on uh, positive trading from here. Radius, nothing. But you can see how the pullback, I wouldn't be... Uh, wouldn't be long. There was your bearish Harami telling you they're coming back, so I would have closed out the position. But notice how the pullback is very indecisive. You get ready to buy this on your next uh, strong buy signal. NSSC, stay short. Cisco, stay short. But you're getting close to an area that everybody's watching to see whether it's time to. Uh, start buying. So if I was short, I'd definitely be watching the 200-day uh, moving average. Merck, stay short. ACRX, big bullish in golf. And remember, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment. I would stay long on this one. Whiting, stay short. But again, a doji right here on the 200. Start watching for bullish confirmation. And SFIX, you stay short on this one. Again, there's your bearish best friend signal. Stay short until you see a buy signal, a confirmed buy signal. Vox, that's ugly. I wouldn't be long or short this one. Just no direction to that. That would be someplace else. And Sid, uh, you should be out of this one. You wouldn't be short because it's below five dollars okay tomorrow what you want to see is whether they're going to hold here at the 200 on the dow and the nasdaq i would suspect if they start trading positive on the nasdaq the first test is going to be back up here to the the uh, 200. Uh, Randy, uh, yep, it's uh, it's worked for me, anyways. It's I always brag that I was the worst investor in the world. I was even a stockbroker for eight years and got out of the business because I realized that the brokerage firms had no more idea about what makes prices go up or down. And uh, then when candlesticks came along, it just made sense. It was just common sense put into graphic depiction. Uh, advanced Auto, stay short on this one. Notice how they came up today and tested the T-line and failed. That's usually a good indication the sellers are still in control. One more, CVRR, you stay short on this one. Uh, and you, ah. Eh. Nothing wildly exciting. I mean, you're in a range. You did have a little bullish in golfing, but your stochastics are starting to get worn out. The way I'd buy this is on a strong buy signal. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow.